Friends, Christians who are devoted and surrendered to God are in a spiritual battle whether they want to be or not. That's just the truth this morning. That's because Satan hates us. Satan is filled with rage towards us because the Bible calls us the apples of his eye. Friends, if you're sold out for Jesus, if you've given your life over to the Lord, and you're living for Him, you have become a target. And the enemy hates you. And that's the truth this morning. How encouraging is that? (laughs) And just because a Christian believer may be in a season of peace... That doesn't mean the battle isn't raging all around them. Friends, if you're experiencing a season of peace this morning, then you ought to be praising God and shouting His name. But that doesn't mean that the the, the battle is not raging all around us. Praise God for His seasons of peace. But it doesn't mean that the battle is not raging all around us. Look around. We need only look around. I can tell you, there are people in this sanctuary this morning that are under attack from the enemy. And the battle is raging. You see, it it, it will be just a matter of time, friends. If you're experiencing a season of peace, it's just going to be a matter of time when the enemy will be allowed to make his presence felt. And when he does, God wants you to be fully informed on what to do. Satan is a spiritual terrorist. We've talked a lot about terrorists in the news these past weeks. We got him, right? Osama bin Laden does not compare to what the Bible calls our spiritual adversary. Satan is a spiritual terrorist. The Bible calls him your adversary. 1 Peter 5.8, the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Friends, the devil is out to rob, kill, and destroy every believer that he can. So living the Christian life in Ephesus was a battle, and it is a battle in our world today as well. So in his letter, Paul writes here and he he tries to encourage the people. And his word is a word of encouragement for you and I this morning as well. He tries to encourage and instruct and he tries to warn the believers at Ephesus. Basically what he's been doing in the letter all along is he's been systematically pumping into their spiritual psyche who they are and what they have in Christ. He's reminded them and he reminds us this morning of all that Christ has accomplished on our behalf. And he's laid out specific instructions about how to live victorious for Christ in a pagan culture. Now Paul, who is this great field general for the Lord, gives his troops and gives us this morning our marching orders for the spiritual battles that we face. You see, friends, the point is, Christians are involved in a real spiritual battle and need to make use of everything the Lord provides in order to be victorious. So the Christian warrior is engaged in a real battle with a real enemy. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul writes in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So the first thing to remember in this passage is that this is not a modern day battle scene. Soldiers are not located hundreds of yards or miles apart taking pot shots at the enemy. This warfare is not waged by dropping bombs from 30,000 feet or sending these predator missiles for hundreds of miles. Um, That's now how this war is waged. What's described here and what Paul is telling us is 
that this battle is hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's, and it's to the death. It's to the death. So the battle being waged here in the Scriptures is not natural as you would think a battle would be. I mean, we all watch television. We watch the news. We all have a pretty good idea of what a conventional battle looks like. Um, uh, this is not the battle that Paul was describing here. The battle being waged here is not natural. It's spiritual. This is a spiritual battle, but very real nonetheless. You see, this is a war, Paul writes, against spiritual forces using spiritual weapons. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in verse 3, Paul writes, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that word carnal means non-spiritual or temporal or worldly, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So this is not the natural battle that we have in our minds. This is the spiritual battle. And it's hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's to the death. And the battle is perpetual. In other words, it never ends. You don't wake up one day and say, okay, we're good to go. The battle's over. No, that's not going to happen. That's not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that our spiritual battles are perpetual or unceasing. Uh, and it is not limited by space or time. Uh, it can be waged in the church. It can be waged in a bar. It can be waged in the car. It can be waged at your workplace. You see, the spiritual battle has no restrictions and no limitations. The enemy will bring the battle wherever he may. And that could be anywhere. See, it's a battle, friends, literally for survival and for life or death. The Scripture says in John 10.10 10, that I read earlier that the thief comes to rob and to kill and destroy. Rob, kill, and destroy. This is our adversary. Satan is out to destroy the, the effectiveness, the witness, and the reputation of every believer. So we're not playing a game. Following Jesus is not just an interesting hobby or a pastime. We have a real enemy, but he is not human. And as I read in, Ephesus, uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it teaches us here that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle against spiritual forces. And it is against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, Paul writes. So what do we do? How do we wage this war? What has God done that we might be prepared, that we might be equipped? Do you know this morning that God has made the way that God has given all we need to wage the war. He's given us the weaponry. He's given us the whole armor of God to wage the war so that we might be victorious. So the first thing we need in this battle, as it says in the Scriptures in, in verse 10, the first thing that we need in this battle is strength. Is strength. In verse 10, Paul writes, Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. First thing that Paul tells us we need this morning to wage this war is strength. That's why the passage opens with those words. Be strong in the Lord and in, and in His mighty power. We need the Lord's strength. We need the power that His mighty power provides. See, the command here in verse 10 is from Paul is be strong. That's the command. Paul writes here in the imperative. This strength that he talks about is absolutely essential and not optional. It is in the passive voice as well. Human strength is not needed here. Or our own strength is not needed here. Don't matter how big you are, or how muscular you are today, or how fit you are necessarily, that's not what Paul is talking about. 